it's great to be asked to come to the Whitewater. Um, we're both strong Kildare people, and it's great to have such a centre in the middle of Newbridge in such a vibrant town. But um, we're not going to talk about shopping because we don't know very much about it. Um, but we will talk about racing. And last week was Cheltenham. I thought it was a good week. What did you think? It was a good week until about a quarter past two on uh, Friday. <laughs> and then it went down Sounds. the hill. But it was, a, it was a good week. It was a great week. It's great to have Jesse here with us. And I think everybody should give Jesse a round of applause. Yeah. First, woman, first woman ever to win a champion hurl. She got a, lot of, got a lot of people out of a lot of holes over the years in all walks of life, but particularly at Cheltenham with Moscow Flyer and again with Jetski the other day. Uh, for those of you who have anything to do with athletes, it's some job to produce a horse uh, in that shape for one of the biggest races of the whole season or the whole year. And it was a great performance. Um, we had a great week, 12 winners, uh, 14 last year, but I think there was a lot of ups and very few downs. Um, you got yourself in a bit of hot water over your, giving out to me about my mouth, you got yourself in a bit of hot water <laughs> over your mouth and, and, and women and children and people dying outside the door and horses and one thing and the other. Where'd you get that from? I don't know. Um, struggling to figure it out, really. Um, but I suppose I did get me seven hot water, but that's what rags do. Um, tabloid newspapers do get you in trouble. Um, what I said was taken out of context. I make no apology for what I said, and I stand 100% behind what I said. Um, it was very sad that our Connor passed away, but unfortunately, um, horses are animals. Animals are pets, and um, pets live outside our back door. Well, they can live inside your back door, but they're not still not part of your family, and uh, blood is thicker than water. I stand behind what I said, and I don't make any apology for it. Um, I would prefer to go home tonight to learn that my pet boxer is something wrong with her and to go home to figure, to figure out something wrong with one of my kids. So um, that's how I feel about it. That's what I said. But England is a, is a different country, and um, everything has to be kept in context in England. But no, things aren't kept in context in England. Um, they have a different way of looking at things, and um, they weren't so happy with me. It's surprising. Uh, I was surprised, maybe old age. I was surprised at the amount of tweets uh, whatever that is, uh, that came on the phone as you showed me people. I, I just think it's, it's a sad, uh, you mentioned there a while ago about uh, modern technology, but I think that's one side of modern technology that's not a great thing when people can say things on the phones, particularly the kids going to school, and we all have kids, and no name on the bottom of it. I mean, it can be very intimidating. I think it's something that we all should be aware of, and those people who are responsible for it uh, should yeah, be aware Yeah, it is, it is. It is. It's, it's spineless people who are texting you, I wish you get your head crushed or tweeting you. I wish you get your head crushed. I wish you break your back. I wish you this, that, and the other. But I'm fine. I'm 35. It doesn't bother me. I keep pressing the block button. But yeah, I would worry for my kids growing up, going to school, as to what people can tweet them, can say to them, and what pressure they can put on them. I think it is a huge thing in, in social life that people have to be aware of that bullying through Twitter um, is a serious problem in Ireland. And I think... It happens to everyone. It just doesn't happen to the kids in school. It happens to me. If you were on Twitter, it would happen to you. Um, but bullies need. To get me on Twitter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but bullying is something that has to be stood up to, and um, there is no place for bullies. So, you know, Twitter is is part of life, but it has its ups and its downs. It's how much you read into it. Uh, it was a good week in general. What was the, the highlights for you? Highlights for me were the novices, uh, Fahin and Vatour. Um, you know, they're two exciting horses for the future. It was great to ride Queen Vig and be part of history. It was disappointing to ride Hurricane Fly and for him to run so flat. But he was beaten by two, three very, very good horses who were all novices last year. So he was champagne fever to look forward to as well. Um, I suppose on a low point, I ended up with, a, with, a, with an injury, but not as bad an injury maybe as Brian Cooper, um, which I'll get over. But it was a good week. What, did, what stood out for you? I think Jesse's horse the first day. Anytime you win one of the championship races, I think that was an outstanding performance uh, from everybody concerned. It was a hell of a race, great race to watch. And uh, I think that was the first day. That was a great performance. The young horses coming along were a big performance as well. Where Willie's domination. Willie Mullins only got beat uh, four heads to have seven winners. Short head in the Gold Cup, uh, a short head in the County Hurl, a short head in the Arkle. I mean, short head is very little. If they had gone the other way, he'd a great week with three winners, with four winners. He could have had seven. He's, and it showed just how strong a hand we have here in Ireland. He's dominant here, but he's also dominant in England, which is ten times a bigger country. I think that's a very great positive thing. And I think the Gold Cup proved to a lot of people who might be involved in horses that if you have a horse good enough, he doesn't have to be Gold Cup in the cost he's forward, uh, that you have a chance at chance. No one would have thought uh, on his own and Lord Windermere, if you asked anyone at Christmas, 
uh, would they fight out the winner of the Gold Cup? As Jesse Harrington said, something in a white coat would have taken you away and locked you up. Would you have changed the result? Uh, would I have changed the result? It's 50-50. I might have changed. I don't know. I, 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 don't, think, I, I don't think I probably would, uh, even though it was hard luck on the second horse. The winner definitely carried the second horse across the track. Uh, now, having said that, I've seen many a horse go across the track and not, be, and not blame anybody. Uh, if we have somebody to blame, I mean, there was nobody to blame Silviana Conti for running across the track, and he ran across the track. Maybe on his own would have ran across, even if Lord Windermere wasn't there. It's a big maybe. Well, it's a maybe, though. It's a maybe, and that's what it is about. It's all about maybes and might be's. You would have changed it, but you'd be looking at it a little bit more biased than I would. Well, I'd be completely biased, but I still would have changed it. But I, I lost a race in Cheltenham 16 months ago, and I created a small bit of interference, but I won a short head. But you touched. We didn't really. You did. <laughs> you touched. I was watching on television. And well, go, you back this, go back this way then. If David Russell runs in a straight line and David Casey runs in a straight line, yeah. they both run the same distance. Yeah. Now, they both run in a diagonal. How much further has David, David Russell made David Casey run? Yeah, but maybe David Casey would have ran that way even if David Russell wasn't there. He never got a chance to run the straight line. Yeah, but he's sticking his right hand, the horse is still coming this way. So you think David Russell took all permissible action to go straight? No, I don't think David Russell got permissible action to go straight. But then he should have lost the race? Straight. I don't know, I think that either. I don't think, I don't think it's black and white. I, 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 I think it, the only thing I was disappointed with, Paul Barton was the stipe on the day and he came on and he said there was interference. They all agreed on that. How minimal does it have to be to change it? It was only a short head. I mean, if, if they admitted there was interference, would you say the fact that David, that David Casey was getting seven days for excessive use had any bearing on the stewards not giving it to him? When you look at that way, maybe it did. Maybe they actually did, felt David Casey tried, or they tried harder than David Russell and broke the rules in doing so. Um, yeah, that could have had a bearing on it. You know, if they gave it to David Casey, would they be vindicating the fact that you overused the whip and that the end result was that you won the race? I don't know. It's only just I'm only asking the question. Yeah, it's an awkward one. Um, uh, do any of them horses go to punches now? You'd be hoping they would, but I suppose the big thing for me is, especially now that I'm back in, in Ireland, it's how, much, how many of the English horses will travel. I mean, the Irish horses go to Cheltenham and add to Cheltenham and make it what it is. I think that some of those should come here and try and win away from home as well. I mean, Jesse brought Jetski to Cheltenham. You see how hard it is to go and win away from home. I wonder how many of the English horses would actually come and try and win here. Not too many. They'll be afraid of their life to come because they won't want to go home licking their wounds, and that's what they'll get with the novices. They might come with a few handicaps, and Richie and the boys will look after them well, and they might come for a nice weekend, but they definitely won't be coming with a view of winning, because they'll win nothing. Like, if we won 12 races in Cheltenham and had to travel over, I'd say they'll only get a consolation race, the charity race on the last day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose, I suppose. But you'd, you'd be hoping maybe, but Twist and Davis bring the new one? Richie, wonder well, Richie will have not to work hard to get him. World, not a chance in the world of Twist and Davis coming with the new one. He'll go to Liverpool for the two mile and five, and they'll say he won't come back here again to, to punch his tongue. I'd say he's mad, but he's not that mad. I suppose, I suppose, I suppose. Tell me, what about the rugby the weekend? Great, great end up for, for Brian O'Driscoll. Brilliant, and he probably deserved it. Um, more than deserved it. Um, but you were looking at the last 20 minutes thinking New Zealand all over again. Uh, we're hanging on and hanging on, and I was glad to see the pass going forward, but the defence was incredible. The, their innovation in attack it didn't remind you of ireland i mean ireland could have been france and france could have been ireland the way they played um and it's brilliant to see guys like andrew trimble have such a good game um o'driscoll go out in such a high but the guys going behind them i mean the two carney brothers like they hop off each other they play they play incredible together paul o'connell was a star worth in, in, in the second row um yeah i'd love to have been in paris it was a great game but going forward ireland have a chance they have a chance because a lot of young fellas there they were having their, their first year there I mean, it's like, like the novices come from Cheltenham. We have a, a heap of young fellas there. We could and we big could and, and big guys to come back. Like I mean, you're missing Sean O'Brien at, at wing forward, uh, Ferris, Zebo, uh, Tommy Bo. There's a few huge names to come back into that team. So maybe come the World Cup in England in 14 months' time or whatever it is, um, Ireland could have a realistic chance of maybe making a semi-final or something like that. Is Joe Schmidt the answer or are the lads the answer? Well, just like having the team of horses, you have to have the right man coaching them. And I'd say he does the basics very, very well. And it looks like he allows them to play. He allows them to use their own heads. Um, he harps on about the set pace, the line out, the, the, the scrum. 
the restarts, things like that. He makes them perfect, but it does look like he allows guys to use their own heads. He hasn't got them tied down to playing from A to B all the way to Z, and you have to let guys ad lib. I mean, there's no point in you putting me on a horse, giving me said instructions and not letting me do my own thing. You have to read the situation in front of you, and unfortunately, rugby seemed to have went that way for a long time, and Joe Schmidt seems to give these kind of confidence to do what they think is right. And what about Man United? What about that man? I met Alex Ferguson in the changing room on Friday in Cheltenham before racing and I said to him what's going on and he was telling about buying this fella and he bought the wrong fella and I said to him look I told you five years ago you had to sell Nanny and you wouldn't. I said a lot of the players are the players you inherited from you and he's kind of said yeah a good few of them have to go he says but it all depends on, the tra- on, what, on, on what shopping he does in the summer. Um, but to be fair to David Moyes like who wanted the job from Alex Ferguson? Except you get the kind of money David Moyes got, like, I suppose you take it. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, that's, but that's it. You're taking it for the money. I mean, you're on a height into nothing. I mean, how are you going to keep going what Alex Ferguson had? How are you going to make it better? You're not. You're on a one-way ticket before you start. Do you think you get gate? Yeah. Poor old David Moyes. Yeah. Poor old David Moyes. It's a certainty, but a that's what's happened. A redundancy package. Yeah, but you're a huge soccer fan now. Would you be a soccer man or a rugby man? Oh, I hate soccer. I hate soccer. Why? I hate everything about it. I think it's the greatest balls of a game I've ever seen in my life. They lie down for everything. Touch them and they lie down. I love the rugby lads. I love all the other sports, but I hate that. Hurling, hurling, or, hurling or football? Hurling. I hurl them because it's just more skill. I love the, the, the football as well. I love the hardiness of it. I love the hunger of it. I love the way to do it. And I spoke to a young fella the other day and I said, what about being profession? And he said, no. He said, it's great to think that uh, the fellow who won the All-Ireland final on Sunday could be teaching your kids on Monday or could be stopping the traffic on Monday or could be fixing the electric light bulb on Monday. And I agree with him. It's a great thing about GAA, the amateur end of it. But I love the, the GAA. I, don't, I, I think hurling is the most wonderful sport of them all for skill and for everything else about it and the toughness of all them lads and the dedication. But I detest, I don't mind watching the soccer game. I like, like watching top fellas. But as far as the humans that play it, I hate them. Strong. Very strong. I hate people who cheat. I hate people who lie down and get their other friend put off because they didn't do anything. They just lie, throw themselves down. Whatever about getting put off for a dirty foul or hitting a fella or kicking a fella. But a fella, because you're off the ball, lies down and rolls around and he's put off. I think it's... I and think with it's the off the ball and the GAA body then? Not really. It's GAA. <laughs> I don't so you, like, I hang don't on, like, that's an absolute contradiction. You I, hate I a fella like, who cheats, I don't like but you don't mind a fella who's sculling a lad off the pitch. You'd have no problem with a fella going after the gooch off the ball and decking would, him to get him off the I pitch. Would, I would, yeah, I technically, like the you gooch, hadn't, like now you have. I like the gooch. I you know, either I like do or you don't. No, I like the gooch. I know you like the gooch, but if you have a problem with the off the ball in the GAA, there's a need to be sorted on it. I have a problem with off the ball. I have a problem with, with, with Pete and che- cheating in any walk of life. Whatever about being a fella being a hardy fella, I have a problem with a fella being cheating. And I think it, the soccer is the highlight of cheating. I think off the ball anywhere is not nice now. I mean, you see it in several places, but I don't think you see as much of this in, in, in the ga as you do in the soccer. Not that it's that dirty in the soccer, but fellas just lie down for nothing. There's a fellow there will ring this there. If you touch him, he goes straight down, whatever his name is. There. There's plenty of them. Yeah, there's pl- plenty of them. Plenty of them. Plenty of them. Dreadful, you know? Yeah, and then, seeing as you were born in Cork, lived in Kildare, when it comes round to all Ireland time, who would you be shouting for? Kildare. I'm a Kildare man. Kildare was good to me. Kildare is a great county. It's great for everybody. It's a great place to live. Uh, it's a wonderful place. All of you were born in Kildare. Uh, I'm a Kildare man through and through. I might have been born in Fermoy, but I'm living in Kildare for over 55 or 6 years. I'm Kildare through and through. A lily white to the core. Not so bad. And Aintree is coming up in a fortnight's time. We were lucky enough to win it in 2000 when Poppy and when it was a real race. Would you be for or against the changes they've made in entry? I'm against them. Outspoken, I'm against them. I think they've made it too easy. Uh, I think they have uh, co toned to the animal rights people far too much. I think entry was all about jumping. Now it's all about galloping. Whatever horse that gets four and a half miles flat out and win the English National. There's very little jumping in it. I remember David Casey turning to you last year and asked you, had he jumped beachers? There was that little there. So that's the kind of races. When I grew up, and even of it, it was a great spectacle. And horses had to jump and people had to ride around it. Now you just fold over and let them run. And whatever horse keeps going the longest. You still have to avoid followers, but whatever horse keeps going and wins it, I think they've damaged it as a spectacle. I think they've made it too much of a, just a, a race. It could be the Scottish National or the Whitbread or the Irish National. It's, it's a great race. It's worth a million pounds and it'd be a lovely race to win. But it's not what it used to be. 
and maybe I'm old-fashioned. I, I, I don't. I think it's taken from the race, and I hope it doesn't suffer from viewers uh, because it's no longer the great spectacle it was. Seabass is banjaxed. He won't go to Chelten or go to Liverpool. He ran yesterday and ran poorly. He's suffering from a bit of old suspensory trouble. Didn't let himself down. So he's uh, on the easy list, so he won't be there. And neither will Katie. To my relief and to my disappointment, in both words, if you can understand what I'm coming from. I agree with you. I think it's gone far too easy. It's, and all it has done is created a faster race instead of a slower race. And speed is not the way forward. The Curra opens on Sunday. I didn't watch much of the flat racing last year. Is there any good two-year-old heading into his three-year-old career that we should be looking out for? I'd say Australia. I'd say Australia is, a, is, is an exceptional horse. Uh, I saw him win last year. Uh, he's a great pedigree. Uh, he's a lovely, easy way of going to things. I'd say he's an exceptional horse with a great name. And I think he could be something to look forward to for the whole year long. Of course, he's in Ballydyle, trained by probably the greatest, everybody here won't agree with me, I'd say the greatest flat trainer of all time in Aidan O'Brien. I don't care where they get him. And that could be Vincent O'Brien now or Darkie Prendergast and everybody else. But for the, for the age he is to have achieved what he has and hasn't changed one iota since I knew him at 18 years of age, he's still time to talk to everybody. Uh, success hasn't affected him. I would love to think that everybody could grow up that way. I think Australia could be uh, a horse to put into the notebook.